Coming up next on The Voice of Alabama Politics, Women in Power. Also, the V-Team takes a look at Governor Ivey's infrastructure plan and more racist rants out of Alabama. For shame. I'm ashamed to show my face in public. Oh, I'm so ashamed. I can never show my face in public again. Yeah, the shame is real. All this and much, much more coming up next on The V. Welcome to the voice of Alabama politics, where we tackle the tough issues so you have the hard facts. I'm your host, Bill Britt, and as always, I'm joined by the team. Welcome all. Hi. Hello, hello, hello. We are just days away from session, and, and the crazies have come out of the woodwork mm -hmm. prior to us getting over to where the craziness usually happens, Josh. Uh, this week, as a result of a Twitter post by... Chip Brownlee uh, from APR. Uh, we found out that Goodloe Sutton, the editor of the Democrat Reporter over in Marengo County, mm -hmm. I guess it is, uh, is just a stone cold racist. I mean, there's not <laughs> much you can say. He called for the Klan to ride again, wanted them to ride on gated communities and Democrats and Republicans who were actually Democrats who wanted to raise taxes here in Alabama. Uh -huh. And those were just a few of the rants that came out of Mr. Sutton. Yeah, yeah it's not been a good week for Goodlow. No. Uh, or maybe it has been a good week for Goodlow. I don't know. I don't know what, what his audience is typically there. I'll have to imagine if you're still reading Goodlow after all these years of all the racist and sexist and derogatory things he said about pretty much every, anyone who was not straight, white, and male, uh, then you're probably in his demographic that he's shooting for. And what he said this week was probably not much of a surprise to you, but uh, it was pretty awful for everyone else. And uh, he, you know, he, he got everyone to kind of turn on him. He, he united uh, Republicans and Democrats in the state, uh, at least in message, uh, yeah. from uh, Richard Shelby to Doug Jones to uh, uh, Kay Ivey and John Merrill. And uh, you know the whole list of folks were, uh, were calling on good low to, to step down, which he is, has no intention of doing, I can assure you. No, I mean, but Susan, you know, this was not just the casual racism that we, we, we so often see. No. I mean, this was stuff like just let the, you know, let the NFL players kneel and stuff like that. Well, no, let's not forget that he was calling out that we have the hemp ropes. He was calling for lynchings, okay? And he was saying that, like you said, with the NFL players, well, you know, that they're going back to their roots because they were used to kneeling to their masters, so they're just going back. This is uh, this is outrageous. Jack, is it just the musings of one crazy man? I mean, he does own a newspaper. I don't know he that he's him. crazy. I just think he's uh, very opinionated. <laughs> and while I appreciate the newspaper business, I can't imagine somebody writing that in this day and age. I mean, it was way over the top. But all these people that are weighing in that don't, don't even know who he is, kind of, you know, it's kind of like the NFL players when they didn't stand up for the national anthem. The more attention you focus on it, the worse it's going to get. Mm -hmm. And I think all these people that keep coming out with all these statements about good low sudden aren't to resign, what are you going to resign from, a newspaper you own? I mean, I don't agree with what he said, and I think it was – way over the top, but I think all these people are making all these public pronouncements. You know, if you I, just keep your mouth shut. He also shut. lost his Alabama Press Association membership as well. Don't forget that. Well, yeah. so what? Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> I mean, you know. Well, I mean, it, it's I, We bad. can't even it's have one. Pretty you know, bad. That's true. Mean, Come on. Uh, uh, the fact that he had one and we don't. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> Lord. Maybe, maybe that tells us something about the Press Association we didn't know before. Yeah, no, and I, I mean, I, and I, don't, I, I don't want y'all to think that I'm buying into what he said because I'm not. I mean, you just cannot make statements like that. Even if you believe it, you need to keep it to yourself. Although he owns a newspaper, First Amendment and all that. But this man, you know, he's 80 years old. He's, you know, 
seen everything in his day. It does not give him a right to do that. But, you know, let's, let's judge him by his you know, deeds and not his words. Well, you know, you have to. Well, have I don't know. Yeah, I think well, you've got to judge by your words on this one. No, I just think that there's no way you say that. There's no way that you say that. Right. Without I'm, it being something that you believe and that being who you are. And right. I believe that's and, who Good Low Sutton is. And as a news organization, you have to set boundaries of what is allowed and not allowed. And that here at APR and the V, we hate groups and any kind of violence are strictly prohibited. I mean, you, you, you know, we, you want to report on these things. And, and look, he does have a mm-hmm. First Amendment right to oh, yeah, he can say, say these yeah. things. I, I do think that, you know, listen, it, it is just, it's beyond insensitive. It is, it is hate, it's hateful. Mm-hmm. It is hateful. Yeah. You know, one of the things that we were talking with some uh, black journalists that we know and uh, some folks that work at the State House, and they said, look, we're, we're not even the least bit shocked by this. The, just the casual racism. Mm-hmm. That we run into at the state house from time to time, or up in D.C. Mm-hmm. from time to time. You know these journalists that cover those areas. They say we see the casual racism that you don't see a lot of time. And uh, you know I think what what well while, while Goodlow is probably an extreme example uh, of some of the things that are still prevalent around here and around a lot of places. Uh, you know, I think particularly more so in the South, but there are a lot of pockets of this around the country. You sure. Know, there's, some, there's some big cities that have some pretty bad problems as well. But, you know, I think w- what he's kind of in, he, he kind of shines a light on some things that are still there and are still a problem. And, you know, there are some serious problems. And there's, if you look back at the history of this state and you see how the, the thoughts that uh, somebody like Goodlow Sutton have have affected us negatively, not just the black people, not just the Hispanic people, but the white people and all of us together. I mean, you can see it. And I mean, look at our education system here in this state and, and how it was set up and designed and funded uh, specifically to try to eliminate uh, funding for black schools, you know, and it's still killing us today. Uh, and it, you, there, there are a bunch of examples of this all over the place. And so it's not okay to have the thoughts of it. It's not, I mean, it's just not. It's not okay for, for people to, to think that way anymore in this day and age when we have learned so much about what is right and what is wrong and how we all suffer from this. It's not okay. Well, I think, what, and Susan, maybe you can think about this, but like one of the, you know, we had those several articles that exposed that Pub, Anderson publisher, mm-hmm. Brandy Ayers, used to spank women with mm-hmm. pica rulers mm-hmm. against their will. We reported on it. He was forced to resign in some fashion. But Goodlow seemed to indicate that that was okay. The women were asking for it. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, this is this is a mentality that's been proven wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and, 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 you know, I was sexually harassed on the job, you know, when I was younger. And I'm telling you, I wasn't asking for it, Mr. Sutton. I wasn't. Wait a minute, you're saying Sutton, you mean Ayers. Ayer, oh, no, no Mr. Sutton. Sutton said that these women were asking for it, oh, okay. that they brought it on themselves, and when they didn't get what they wanted out of whomever was sexually harassing them, that then that's when they came out and they came turned on. Oh, I man. mean, we know these things are not true. Yeah. And to say that it's politically, you know, I'm being politically incorrect because I'm saying this. Yeah. No, that's just no. being dumb and yeah. mean. No, you know? Yeah, you're being a jackass is yeah. what you're being. I mean, yeah. listen, and I, I'm all for his right to say whatever. You, you have a First Amendment right to say whatever you want to say, but you don't have a First Amendment right to avoid the consequences of what that's you right. say. Mm-hmm. And that's what he's hearing now. Exactly. And, and, you know, and it's just, he's, you know, really a moron. Poor guy. And it's, we got to go with it. Anyway, all right, we're going to have to leave it right there. You're watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. We'll be right back with more news and opinion. What a great opportunity for your success. Adding half a million highly skilled employees to our workforce by 2025 is how we stay ahead in Alabama. Our economy is stronger than it's been in years, and a skilled workforce is more important than ever. Things move fast, so choose your path. Your success is waiting, plus a great future for Alabama. Success Plus. Go for it. The Energy Institute of Alabama promotes reliable, affordable, and clean energy to help grow our economy, create high-paying jobs, and build public support for Alabama's energy industry. 
Access to clean, affordable energy continues to be an issue of vital importance in the halls of government and around the kitchen tables across our nation. The Energy Institute of Alabama is the best source of energy industry information and how it affects households across the state, from convenient energy production to alternative fuels to solar power and beyond. What are you doing today, babe? I thought I'd head down to the lake with the guys, do a little fishing. Of course, none of us will be wearing our seat belts. I'll lose control of the truck, wrap it around a tree, and kill us all. Okay. Drive safe, Alabama. A message from your Alabama Department of Transportation. Back to the V, the voice of Alabama politics. Uh, this last week, the ACLU, the NAACP, and the Bradford family have called for the video release of E.J. E. Bradford when he was shot and killed in the Hoover Mall mm -hmm. on Thanksgiving evening, Josh. Uh, I would personally like to see more than this one clip that we've seen, the little snippet here, the family would like to see the whole tape. Mm -hmm. And there's probably multiple cameras that we have not seen that the Attorney General has seen. Yeah, I believe they've, they've said that publicly, right? Yeah. That uh, the, or the AG's office I'm talking about has said publicly that they have multiple videos of, of this. I mean, I think I think these are the only two store cameras that, that were able to catch it, uh, if I'm not mistaken, and just going by their reports. Uh, I believe they said these were the only two store cameras, but there were cell phone videos and things like, of that nature that were turned in. And I would, you know, I would like to see that. I would like to see the kind of the aftermath of of the whole thing to see what the what the cops looked like, you know, after the thing went down to see kind of. I think you can tell a lot about what went what happened by the body language uh, of the police officers there. And you know, I'll say this: it could be a situation where you feel. Uh, you, you you understand better the the attitude of the cops in that if you if you see something in the video there afterwards where you know a cop you know you know whew, oh, you know or he he thinks it's over or you can see them spreading out and making sure there are no other shooters you kind of will better understand the overall climate I mean what we have is a little snippet yeah, and it's and, just not much and, and Susan when you and I sat down with the frame by frame of these these videos mm -hmm. we came pretty convinced mm -hmm. that it was a bad, bad shoot. Not just mm -hmm. beyond the fact that he was shot three times in the back, right. mm -hmm. but that he was in retreat and then went forward. Mm -hmm. But they sh he'd only made a couple of steps before they put him down dead on the ground. For, and listen, we're novice, mm -hmm. but we've looked at a lot of stuff. And it, but like Josh says, if you could see a little more, because you can't really see the police as they approach him. You can only just see basically the barrel of the gun as they start coming in. So when did they round the corner? Did they just round it yeah. when they saw him with a gun and running forward? Did they actually see him step back? There's there's more to the story here, maybe that that will help us better understand and it. You got to wonder why that's you know yeah. that mm -hmm. hadn't been. I well, mean, they said they have it, and then they don't release any of it except for these two little videos. You cannot trust the Attorney General of the State of Alabama, yes. Steve Marshall, Certainly. to tell the truth about anything, much less his late night. Career counseling. Right. But uh, what I do, more Jack. More information is always better. What I do, yeah. Jack, wonder, even if the, I mean, we're saying it's a good shoot. Is there any reason why the family and the attorney shouldn't see the, the video? No, I, I think they have, I think they have a right to see the video. I mean, it was their, their loved one who was killed. Yeah. Um, I just think that nobody needs to jump to conclusions and, you look at that, you can't tell a damn thing. No, I you mean, really can't. You, you I mean, can make you some slow it down, you, you can't tell anything. Yeah. So, you know. And, 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 and this is the thing. E.J. Bradford cannot speak for himself. No. He has to have these people speak for him. Mm -hmm. And he was shot for no other reason than he had a legal firearm on him mm -hmm. and had it out as we tell people to do. But it was pointed to the ground. Mm -hmm. We understand. But again, a lot of questions. I know this is, uh, this is something that uh, uh, we, don't talk, we don't get positive stories a lot of times. There's a lot of negative stories, right, Jack? Yes. But this week, Steve, uh, Steve Flowers wrote a wonderful piece 
uh, and and we we published it about how most of the time when you look at women in government, you look to more blue states and not a red state like Alabama. And Steve pointed out that in Alabama, we have some very we have women in very senior leadership positions. Governor Kay Ivey, uh, Congresswoman Terry Sewell, Congresswoman Martha Roby, uh, Al Gop uh, Chair Terry Lathan, uh, yeah, and then Al Gop, uh, the Democratic Party has Nancy Worley. I mean, that one might be a questionable leadership thing. And then last but not least. It might, uh, it might be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't dislike Nancy, but I mean, at this point, I think it's, it's fair to say it's a questionable leadership. Yeah. Thing, you know. And then Katie Britt, who is leading BCA. I mean, that's it's kind of phenomenal that we have this many women uh, in leadership in Alabama. Yeah, it is. I'll agree. <laughs> I'll agree. Um, is there something? And I, no, I, I think I think Cav, he's a leader. I really do. Um I don't know about Terry Sewell, don't know much about her, you know, she's sort of status quo if you ask me. Martha Roby is certainly part of the establishment, which if you like that kind of thing, it's great. Terry Lathan and Nancy Worley, okay, great. I mean, I, I mean big deal, you know? I, I think that- I I'm just not feeling any love over here. You're not that. getting any from me. <laughs> <laughs> Susan, are you feeling any love? Hey, oh, I was in the discussion between these two in the conference room. <laughs> And, and I think Jack and I oddly mostly agree here. It, it's not that we uh, that I have a problem with women in leadership. I think it's great, but I don't know that these particular women necessarily rise to the level of say uh, a Nancy Pelosi. Whether you love or hate Nancy Pelosi, there's no doubt that she is a leader. Right, right? that's that true. She is leading things. That she's out in front. She's taking control. When's the last time anybody saw Martha Roby? I mean, really? Yeah, she where, done, she done. She's not where, around. Where is she? I mean, they've She's been trying to get her to have a town hall for years now. No, yeah. she never shows up. And so, I mean, and it's just that that's where I think we have a problem. It's not necessarily, uh, it's great that you have women because I, I think you, you do get a, a, a different perspective and that uh, is always helpful, okay? It's always helpful. But, I mean, to put it on the same par with some of these other states and, and the women that they have in the leadership positions, and the leaders that they are, I think, is not necessarily apples to apples. Susan, can you bail me out here? Because I'm feeling... Well, <laughs> well, I mean, listen. I mean, hey, this is an accomplishment for women. I mean, we're only 100 years... Almost next year will be 100th anniversary of us actually being able to vote in this country. Yeah, maybe Alabama's behind. We're always behind. But, hey, we're getting somewhere with this. All right, we're You've actually... You've come somewhere. a long way, baby. You know I have, Jack? I have... And I see promise in the new, new generation that's coming up right now. There are several women that I'm seeing coming up, both in the Republican and Democrat Party, that really look promising. Yeah, and yeah, then, and, and in Congress, there's some there's some leader there's some women who are leaders. Yeah, mm -hmm. both sides of the aisle. I think Kay Ivey is truly a leader. I really do. I don't always agree with her, but she's a leader. She takes the bull by the horns and. She does what she, does she that. Uh, and has, she a does great, that. has a great uh, little yeah. nice saying about it. Uh, and but, I uh, think can does she Britt say anything about that? taking the bull by the horn? I no, no, she not, mostly just talks about taking the pig by. But no, it's <laughs> you know sugar. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, no, uh, listen, I, I agree with with Jack about this. I mean, I do. I mean, I think that it's you know. It's great that they are there, and it. And I, I agree with Susan. It's a it's a fantastic time for women. You know what this shows to me that we've got some great women, and we got some sorry men. You said it. I did. That might be true. You said it. All right, we're gonna leave it right there. You're watching the V, the voice of Alabama politics. We'll be right back. doing today? Um, play the game. Thought I'd go out for a drive later, maybe. Text some friends while I'm doing it. Scroll through social media. Kill the family four and a head on collision. Cool, man. Drive safe, Alabama. A message from your Alabama Department of Transportation.
to the V, the voice of Alabama politics. Susan, more irregularities in the EPA case against Scott Phillips and Trey Glenn. These men were accused of violating the Alabama State Ethics Act. Uh, uh, Trey Glenn was Trump, President Trump's EPA administrator for the Southeast. Uh, the men been charged with, you know, a couple, maybe two dozen, less than two dozen uh, ethics, felony ethics violations. We reported back when they were indicted mm -hmm. that then Attorney General uh, Mike Anderton in Jefferson County didn't know anything about it. Mm -hmm. Well, this past week, Anderton came out with a signed affidavit and said, I did not ask them to come to Jefferson County. We did not have a case or any kind of investigation on these men, to my recollection, and basically said that everything that the Ethics Commission and their lawyer said was a lie. Well, the Ethics Commission also, or I'll say Albritton and uh, uh, I can't think of her name right now, Cynthia Ralston. Cynthia Ralston came out with their press release thanking the district attorney for all their hard work in the case when Anderton said they didn't do any work in the case. Right. So, I mean, there's one clue right there. Anderton told them to begin with, and he says this in the letter, I didn't know anything about the case. I told them they could use my grand jury. But they're acting like he was all involved in the whole thing when they wasn't. Well, I mean, Jack, the original statement said that Anderton came to them and asked them to help him with the case. But now he, he didn't say that. They said that. Anderton now says, no, 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 no. They came to me and wanted to, you know, use me. That's not the way the ethics law works. No, and the ethic. since when has the Ethics Commission been proactive? The only reason... <laughs> the only, yeah, really, seriously. They're, I mean, they clear everybody. They don't go after them. That's right. <laughs> you know, they're the clearinghouse, literally. But... A girl who worked at GASP, who had a problem with the EPA, her sister is uh, Tom Albritton's legal counsel at the Ethics Commission. Right. It smells really bad. Yeah, Cynthia Probst Ralston is the general counsel for the Ethics Commission. She also is the sister of the former GASP uh, executive director, and that would be Stacy Probst. But, but uh, you know... While these guys, Josh, may have done something wrong, we, you know, you can't say right yeah. now, but even if they did something wrong, mm -hmm. these guys have so screwed up the procedure, yeah. it's hard to imagine how a judge doesn't throw this out. Yeah, I mean, you're right. They are innocent until proven guilty. I've, I've seen the show Cops. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, it, you know... <sighs> I am so tired of talking about the ethics. Commission. I really am too. I am honest so to God. tired of it because it's well, if they weren't shady, bad. if they weren't shady, we wouldn't have, no, have anything to talk it's about. Exactly, you're right. They're shady. And this is an example of it. When is the last time that you, you you've seen, seen something that the ethics commission did and thought, "Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Good job." Good when job, they adjourned. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, for real, it's just it's it's so it's letting people off of their fines. It's you know covering for this guy so he can take money from this group as a consultant over here. It's not prosecute or not sending Steve Marshall stuff on, even though he clearly violated the law. I mean, it's always something that is negative with this stuff. Even in the Bentley case, where they eventually did the right thing, they screwed up that process. <laughs> And completely violated his rights yeah. all, along the way. I mean, it's just every single time it's something stupid. Well, didn't they go to the AG with this issue? Well, after they had indicted them, they went over and said, look, uh, you know, we've got to prosecute this case, but we're not prepared to prosecute it. We don't have the manpower. So they asked the attorney general to prosecute the case after they got the indictment. Well, the attorney general's people looked at it and said, you have made so many errors there's no way we'll take this case. Right. It's not prosecutable. I mean, Good job, fellas. Yeah. Nice work. <laughs> you, you, you skipped the procedures, you skipped the process in, in, in multiple different places, and now you want to prosecute the case? You know, that, that's the thing. We, we, we have pr legal procedure that to be followed. The truth is they should have taken the case to the Ethics Commission and let them do, do what they usually do, which is throw it out. Yeah, yeah. But that, I guess, they, <laughs> exactly. you know, and I tend to think, we've talked about this before, I th think that, that Tom Albritton and Cynthia Ralston wanted a big, major, big headlines. EPA, Trump EPA administrator charged with ethics violence. Big headline, easy conviction, and now they've got a big headline and, and a very hip 
steep hill to climb. I just don't understand. I just don't. I just don't understand what they're doing. I mean, really. I, I really think this was a power grab. <laughs> there's I so really many do. shady people in the Alabama legislature. Why they want to go pick on the EPA? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, like, uh, yeah, people I bringing you stuff. I mean, John Merrill at... brings you stuff, you know, yeah, on a silver Yeah, it lists, long lists, uh, well, uh, spreadsheets. We brought you Steve Marshall, handed it right <coughs> to you. Yeah. You could have done something there. Now, this case, the, the, uh, in the your ethics lap. command. Here, here's another thing I think is kind of interesting. What if, you know, this Trey uh, Glenn had to resign from his job, right? So he yeah. lost his job, so yeah. he has no income. Could he, in fact, because the commission did this, could he, in fact, sue the commission? On a civil suit, I believe. Well, if they, if he, you know, maybe if they find that it was some malicious prosecution, yeah. maybe so. Yeah. yeah, maybe, but, I mean, we're an at-will state, so yeah. I don't know. Yeah, true. Well, it just it's interesting to me to see it. Maybe if somebody's got some civil liability here, uh, I'm. Anyway, yeah, but does it apply to federal jobs? Yeah, I don't know. We have to look and see. That's interesting. All right, we only got about a minute and a half. Governor K. Ivey wants to. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Can we have less time for this? <laughs> well, if you keep doing that, yeah, we're about one fifteen. <laughs> Governor K. Ivey wants an infrastructure. She's got an infrastructure plan. She wants to raise. Uh, some revenue on the back of gas tax. G uh, Donald Trump, President Donald Trump, says he wants to build gleaming Big highways gleams. and bridges and all that stuff, and it to be the biggest overhaul, the biggest spending on ever. infrastructure ever. In D.C., Jack, and in Alabama, nobody's saying a word about President Trump's uh, plan to spend $1.5 trillion uh, on infrastructure, which would all be debt, but Kay Ivey wants to raise 10, 12 cents on the gallon of gas. And people are losing their minds. Well, believe it or not, as a good Republican, I actually trust the federal government more than I do the <laughs> Alabama legislature. Only because okay. you know them more. <laughs> <laughs> I know what they're capable of. But um, no, I mean, you know, this gas tax is very controversial. And I understand why people want it. And I understand why people don't want it. Well, we got about five seconds. Susan, you want the last word? Well, I think they're going to get it whether they want it or not. Josh? They're going to tax people for going to work. Well, there you go. You've been watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. You watch us because we watch them.